Greetings. Greetings, everyone. My name is Murigi Wanzambe. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to the Most High for the work that He's doing in our lives, for the awakening that is taking place in the mainland Africa, the Sub Saharan Africa, beyond the rivers of Kush. Hallelujah. And also to our brothers and sisters scattered in the four corners of the world. Hallelujah. The Most High is doing a great work in awakening us and exposing lies and deceptions that we've believed in for years, for years and years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm forever grateful for all that that He is doing. Hallelujah. I'm also grateful to be in the kingdom of the Most High for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Such an, a privilege and an honor, the things that He's revealing to us. There are people who probably longed for such, but they didn't get to such a place but we are glad we are glad hallelujah he is merciful that Tanzania he is merciful hallelujah so today uh, just it, this is a teaching in response to one of my friends who contacted me and, and told me uh, that he thinks I'm in error all right it's because uh, in my intro video I said uh, not all scripture is God breathed okay not all scriptures got breathed and i still stand on the same yes i know i know in the book of timothy first timothy no second timothy 3 16 it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of god or all scripture is got breathed okay and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness now i have nothing wrong with that scripture okay but uh, what we need to understand is that the people who put the books together in form of a Bible, they had other ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. And one, one of their agenda was to hide the truth. Okay? That's why I say not every scripture is God-breathed. Because when you add or when you subtract from the scriptures, then you mess up with the truth sure you mess up with the truth okay when you add something that is yours or when something is contrary to what the most High has established then it is wrong remember the most High is not the author of confusion he is the most High of order <laughs> he does things in an orderly manner he follows some some forms of patterns <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah so we are going to share the word and see and especially want to look at the works of paul look at romans galatians timothy there are some 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 things that paul shares that are contrary to what the most has said in the old testament even to what the messiah himself says so at the end of the day we'll be able to judge or you'll judge by yourself and may the most i help us all because at the end of the day, just like Isaiah asked, who believed our report? So whose report will we believe? We believe the report of the Most High or the report of Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. So I welcome. Let's see. Let's let, let, let's share in the scriptures and, learn, and get to learn more. May the Most High open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear and our hearts that we may understand and comprehend what he's doing at such a time as this. Hallelujah. 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 These are scriptures that I like so much. Numbers 23 19. The Most High, He says that He is not a man that He should lie. He's neither not the Son of Man. He's neither the Son of Man that He should repent or change His mind. Hallelujah. The Most High does not lie doesn't change his mind there are some things that he has set in place and they remain so forever actually forever in Malachi 3 6 3 6 it says for I am the most I, I change not I change not he does not change hallelujah he does not change whatever has been established in the so to speak Old Testament still remains even in the new covenant <laughs> even in the world to come 
there are some things that are established in heaven and on earth. That's why Moses said, I call upon heaven and earth to be a witness. Because these things are forever established. The word of the Most High is forever established in the heavens. Here on earth. And so in John 8, 32, he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Whose truth? The Most High's truth. Not man's truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It should be our endeavor to search truth. Hallelujah. He says, Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. As we seek him, we shall find him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So actually we shall know him in essence. Hallelujah. And by knowing him, we will be set free. Hallelujah. So we want to look at scriptures and see what the Most High says and see if there are other scriptures that are in contradiction to what the Most High has said. Hallelujah. So that you can understand when I say not all scripture are God breathed. <laughs> because Satan has found himself in the Holy Scriptures. Believe it or not. <laughs> there are things that have been removed. There are things that have been added. Hallelujah. To hide the whole truth. For example, for all these years we never knew that the people of the Most High are black people. That the Messiah is black. <laughs> that the Most High himself, he is black. Hallelujah. There are scriptures to back that up. Hallelujah. If you want, you can go back to uh, the, the first, first videos that I did. Yeah, I share more on, on the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's continue with the scriptures and get to understand these things. Hallelujah. 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 And to begin with, we want to understand the reason as to why the Savior came. The reason as to why the Messiah came. The one that you refer to as JC. His name is Yesaya. The one who comes in the name of Yah. The name of the Moster. Salvation that comes in the name of Yah, the name of Mosta, the Most High. Hallelujah. What did he come to do? Hallelujah. Let's look at the scriptures. Hallelujah. In Matthew 1 21, as it was declared by Angel Gabriel, it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name, because that is not his name. His name is Isaiah. For he shall save his people from their sins. Alright? The son that has come forth, his purpose, hallelujah, his calling, his mandate is to save who? His people huh? from their sins. <laughs> to save his people. His call is to his people. Isolele, the one that are set apart. Hallelujah. <laughs> scriptures. And scriptures are literal, by the way. And Matthew 15, verse 24 and verse 26. This is the Messiah himself speaking. And he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's the testimony of the Messiah. And remember in Luke, is it in Luke or, uh, yeah, he, he says that I am about my father's business. So the father's business is about the lost sheep of Isolele. And that's why he says categorically that I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But he answered, verse 26, and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. This is this are the time that he had uh, an encounter with a Canaanite woman. And he's telling her, No, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Isolele. <laughs> and it's not fit to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Now, these are the words of the Messiah himself. 
They are not my words. They are written. Look at the scriptures. Open your Bibles and see if you have the same writings. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. So in Matthew 10, 5, verse 6. I mean 5 to 6. This is a time that the, that the Messiah is sending his disciples to go and minister. Yeah, They started preaching even before Acts. <laughs> They were preaching while the Messiah was still here. And what kind of preaching were they doing? Or where did they go to preach? Alright. So these twelve, he says, sent forth and commanded them, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter you not. See? Scriptures. The Messiah is sending his disciples and tells them, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the house of the Samaritans. Enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm. Do you see? Has anyone, any, anyone ever shared these things with you? Or in your own studies, have you come across this? To understand that the Messiah was sent to save his people. He himself testifies and says, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when he is commissioning his disciples, he says, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the question is, how did this change? How did this change? Let's see what Paul have to say in regards to the same issue. Okay. So look at Romans 11.13. This is Paul. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify my office. He is the apostle of the Gentiles. The Messiah says, don't go to the Gentiles. He says, I'm not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of his soul. And in Galatians 2, 8, he says, For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostle, <laughs> apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Hallelujah. How comes when it comes to Paul, it all changes. But the most high now, the most high now is working towards the Gentiles. Okay? I'll leave that to decide by yourself and for yourself. If the grace was extended to the Gentiles, you make that decision by yourself. But when I look at what the Messiah says, he says something different Galatians 3 14 that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through who through the Messiah okay is that true hmm. okay first Timothy 2 7 where unto am ordained a preacher and an apostle I speak the truth in Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity so who ordained him to be a preacher to the Gentiles, a teacher to the Gentiles? Don't you see it contradicts what the Messiah himself said? Don't you see it contradicts the words of Angel Gabriel? <laughs> Hallelujah. So these are some of the things that I find. Uh, there being a disparity all right concerning what the messiah said and what paul is saying let's continue let me show you some some more because there's still some more hallelujah hallelujah was the law done away with the law was the law done away with <laughs> it's a big question 
it is a big question indeed. Let's look at the scriptures, what the scripture says concerning the law, and what Paul says concerning the law. <laughs> You'll be shocked. Let's see. Matthew 5, 17, 19. This is the Messiah speaking again. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, all the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I have come to fulfill. Look at the meaning of fulfill. To fulfill is not to do away with. He didn't fulfill all the law on our behalf. <laughs> he came to enforce the law. He taught the law. There are many instances that you will see him observing the Sabbath. He heals someone and then he says, go and show yourself to the priest as per the instruction by Moses. <laughs> Verse 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled hmm. till all be fulfilled whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven okay so you see the law is here to stay the Messiah didn't do away with the law. The law is still in force. The law is still in force. The heavens and earth will pass. But the law, whatever is written, <laughs> it shall be fulfilled. Nothing shall pass away. But it shall all be fulfilled. So whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Luke 16, 17. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one title of the law to fail. The law will never fail. Hallelujah. What the monster has set is there to stay. That's why Moses said, I'm calling upon heaven and earth to be a witness. Because his word, his law, is established in the heavens and also on earth and by the way the laws of the most High, the commandments the statutes all of that is established in the heavens <laughs> hallelujah but let's see what does the scripture says especially when it comes to the works of paul let's check okay ephesians 2 15 paul is saying having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments containing ordinances for to make himself of twain one new man so making peace hmm. ponder that ponder that brothers and sisters we've just read the account of the messiah himself he says that the law will not pass away but he Paul says having abolished so who abolished? Did the Messiah not say in, in, in Matthew 5 that think that think not that I've come to abolish the law and the commandments and the prophets? No. So if he did not come to abolish, then how comes Paul is saying here that having abolished in his flesh the enmity of the law of commandments containing ordinances? Ah, it's right there. Right there. And in Hebrews 7, 18, for there is verily a disannulling, look at that word disannulling, of the commandment, goings uh, be, uh, before for the, weak, the weakness and unprof unprofitableness thereof. Paul is saying here that there is a disannulling, disannulling of the commandment. To disannul is to mean to abolish, to cancel, to put away, to reject. Hmm. Ha! Ah, don't you find this strange? How comes he comes with this strange doctrine? Are these the words of Apostle Paul himself? Or were the words changed? I tend to think that the words were changed. Because the Apostle Paul was not sent to the Gentiles. He was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. The lost sheep of his holy that was scattered in the Gentile lands. 
was going to them, not to the Romans, the Galatians, and the Corinthians and the rest. No. He went to he, to the people of the most the Bantu scattered abroad. Hallelujah. So the law was never abolished. It was never disannulled. How can you be against the words of the Most High? How can you be against the word of the Messiah himself? Where did this come from? Hey. And there's still much more. There's still much more. Let's continue. Hallelujah. Circumcision. Hey. Circumcision started or the most high told, you know, with our father Abraham. <laughs> and what did it say concerning circumcision? Uh, look at Genesis. Genesis 17.10 This is my covenant. This is the most high speaking, by the way. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after thee. That is forever. Okay? Every man shall It's a sign. It's one of the signs of the covenant that we have with the Most High. Circumcision. So we don't do it for health purpose. Yeah, we don't do it because it's popular. We do it because we have a covenant with the Most High. <laughs> we have a covenant with the Most High. Hallelujah. So the Most High introduced circumcision. But let's see. What does Paul say concerning the same subject? Open your eyes, brothers and sisters. Galatians 5, 2 to 4. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if, we be, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Hey! Hmm. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a de debtor to do the whole law, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Hey, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. You see, now Paul is saying that if you're circumcised, the Messiah has profit. I mean, shall profit you nothing. He has become of no effect unto you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So that is to mean <laughs> for everyone of you that has undergone circumcision and you're reading this word, you're in church, then in essence, the one you call Christ shall profit you nothing. It's become of no effect unto you. That is what Paul is saying. Remember, the Messiah came <laughs> to save his people, to seek and save the lost sheep of Israel, the lost sheep of his holy land. He says, I'm only sent to the house of Israel, not to the Gentiles. He tells the disciples, don't go to the Gentiles or even the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of Israel. Hallelujah. The Most High gave us a sign of circumcision. Did he change? Did he lie to Abraham, his friend? <laughs> Did he lie to him and to the rest? of the prophets, Moses, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and the rest of the saints. Hmm. And see, another part here, verse 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from the grace. That's to mean if you're observing the law, you're fallen, you're not under grace. There's no grace for you, in essence. Don't you see there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. <laughs> Galatians 5, 6. For in Jesus Christ, or for, for in the Messiah, Isaiah, neither circumcision avails anything. My goodness. Circumcision avails anything? As in, it avails nothing. This is not important. But, but the Most High Himself instructed Abraham our father that this you shall do you shall circumcise yourself your son 
your son's son. As in something perpetual. Okay. So, but here Paul is saying otherwise. Christ, for in Christ, for in the Messiah, neither circumcision avails anything. It's not important. You don't have to, in other words. So woe unto you. Woe unto you, I'll say so. Or is Paul actually uh, preaching a different uh, gospel, so to speak? Is he publishing good news that is different from what the Messiah preached? Okay, judge for yourself. But this is contrary to the words of the Most High. And the Most High is not a liar. He does not establish something then just to remove it. Yeah, hey. Ha. Oh, have mercy to Tanzambi. Have mercy on us. Hallelujah. So let's see some more. Hmm. Hmm. Concerning unclean foods. Clean and unclean foods. Are we allowed to eat all foods? <laughs> Can we eat all foods? Hey. There's a reason as to why the Most High put things into place. Even when it comes to dietary laws. There's a reason. He knows the reason as to why he said don't eat the pig, the eagle and the rest. So when you look at Leviticus 11 and also Deuteronomy 14, you have a list of what to be eaten and what not to be eaten. So in Leviticus 11, 4 to 8, then verse 10 and 13, nevertheless, Nevertheless, this shall you not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he chews the cud, but divides not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. So the camel is unclean, not supposed to eat camel. Verse 5, five. and the coney, that is a rock badger or a hyrax, eh? because he chews the cud, but divides not the hoof. He is unclean to you and the hair <laughs> the rabbits because he chews the card but divides not the hoof he is unclean unto you verse 7 and the swine <laughs> the swine has become popular nowadays but the swine though he divides the hoof and be cloven footed yet chews not the card he is unclean unto you of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. <laughs> they are unclean unto you. Verse 10 And all that have not fins, this is now the fish in the sea, and the scales in the seas, and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination to you anything that has no fins <laughs> anything that has no scales they are the, an abomination an abomination they are unclean the likes of shrimps you know seafoods catfish and, and many other things unclean okay <laughs> verse 13 uh, and these are they which which you shall have in abomination among the fowls uh, they shall not be eaten they are, not, they are an abomination the eagle the osphirage the osprey and many others you can read leviticus 11 for more information on the same deuteronomy 14 3 you shall not eat any abominable thing that's the word of the most high and it's forever established in heaven and on earth you shall not eat any abominable thing or any unclean thing hmm. let's ponder a bit because when it comes to the new testament paul have something different to say have a look at this in first timothy 4 3 to 5 forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats 
which the Most High has created to be received with thanksgiving. Hey. Of them which you, of them which believe and know the truth. Verse 4. For every creature of the Most High is good and nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of the Most High and prayer. Really? Is that what the Most High says in Leviticus 11 in Deuteronomy 14? Hmm. That every creature of the Most High is good? He just says it's unclean, abominable. The swine is unclean. The pig is unclean. Hey. Hey. Uh, but here Paul is saying, you give thanks. You give thanks, sanctify by the word of the Most High in prayer. And you receive it. Nothing shall be refused. My goodness. My goodness. So you keep eating pig with thanksgiving. <laughs> you keep eating shrimps, uh, seafood with thanksgiving. Uh, and other things. Uh, rabbits, ducks and the rest. With thanksgiving. Do you think the most I didn't know? What he was doing? What he was saying? Do you think he just spoke for the sake of speaking? My goodness, his word is law. The word that comes from his mouth is law. It's forever established. It shall not fall to the ground. It has to be fulfilled to the end. <laughs> Science has it, it has proven that these animals, they are very high in toxins. And you're here giving thanks. At the end of the day, <laughs> you develop some med uh, some health issues, and then <laughs> oh, Tanzania help us. You develop health issues, then you're there seeking for prayer, believing the Most High to heal you. Yeah, and you quote the scripture. You sent forth your word and healed our diseases. Yes, He did so, but He told us to abstain from every ab abominable animal. It's unclean told us not to even touch the carcass. Leave alone eating, touching the carcass, the bones of the pigs. Hey. Hey. I, don't, I don't know what to say. Because it's plain. Look. Do you think do you think these are the words of Paul or these are words that were added? Now uh, uh, that's why I say not every scripture is breathed. Not every scripture has proceeded from the mouth of the Father. No. Some of these words have been tampered with. Hallelujah. What is evil is evil. And what is good is good. Evil cannot become good. What is unclean is unclean. It cannot become clean. Because you said you gave thanks. And you sanctified it. Ha. Woe oh, unto you. If you wish. Continue eating pigs. And other unclean animals. And see. See what the end will be. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. There's still some more. Let's check. Read that for yourself. Hmm. How do we attain salvation? How do we attain eternal life? What does the scripture say concerning salvation? Life. Eternal life. See the words of the Messiah himself. The one that you claim he saved you. The one that the world says is the savior of the world. What did he say concerning salvation? What did he say? Hey. Look at this. This is the Messiah himself. Speaking concerning salvation. In Luke 10, 25, verse 28. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do? To inherit eternal life that is the question that is the big question what shall i do 
to inherit eternal life. Ha. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he answering said, You shall love the Most High with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28, Luke 10, 28. See how the Messiah responds. See how Isaiah responds. And he said unto him, You have answered right. This do, and you shall live. Remember the question, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? The Messiah points him to the law. He says, This do, do what? Do the law. Perform the law. Observe to keep the law. And you shall live or you shall have eternal life. Hey. 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 You think the law was, uh, <laughs> was done away with? Hmm? It's, the law is actually the way of your salvation. <laughs> the commandments of the monster. The statutes. The testimonies of the monster. That's the path of life as a path of salvation let no man lie to you <laughs> in in matthew 19 16 and 17 the messiah again in, a, in, in, in matthew 19 and behold one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall i do that i may have eternal life what good thing what do i do for me to have eternal life because salvation is all about eternal life we are told, get saved so that you have eternal life. Hallelujah, you'll have life even after this. Hey. And he said unto him, Why call you me good? There is none good but the most high. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Hey, case closed. If you will enter into life, keep the commandments. And I believe when the Messiah sent forth the disciples and told them, do not go to the, to, 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 to the Gentiles or the, to the Samaritans, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is what he was ministering. Hallelujah. He was telling them, keep the law. Because by the way, the time by the time the Messiah was coming on board, the house of Israel, the people of the Most High had left the ways of the, Mes of the Most High. Hallelujah. So he was coming to restore them to the ways of the Most High. That's the only path of salvation. Salvation is not just con it's, it's not confessing and believing in your heart, as we'll see. It is the law. <laughs> it is the law. He came to take us back to the law, just like Moses. By the time Moses is delivering uh, the children of Israel from Egypt, these people had forgotten the law. Now the Most High restores the law, the commandments, the statutes, the ordinances through Moses. He says this, you shall keep forever from generation to generation. You shall teach your children. Hallelujah. So again, the question is, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And the answer from Isaiah himself, but if you will enter into life, Keep the commandments. Brothers and sisters, to every Bantu that is listening to me, this is the way of salvation. Keep the commandments. This is the way of eternal life. Keep the commandments. <laughs> mm. That's how it is. That's how it is. Hallelujah. That's how it is. Hallelujah. That's how it is. But look at Romans 10.9 again. A different view from the Apostle Paul. 10 verse 9. That if you shall confess with your mouth of the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that the Most I raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That is what is being preached. That is what has been preached for thousands and thousands of years. The salvation is by confessing the Messiah with your mouth and believing in your heart that the Most High raised him from the dead. 
then you shall be saved. Do I believe that the Most High raised him from the dead? Yes, I do. Do I believe that he came as the Messiah to save his people from, from their sins? Yes, I do. Hmm. But I also believe that he said the way of life is the law. Keep the commandments. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of the most high not of works lest any man should boast. It is of works. There is the element of grace I believe I believe so but there is another element of works in obeying and keeping the laws of the most high. Hallelujah. 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 See. See for yourself. I pray. I pray that the Most High opens your eyes. That you may see. And your ears that you may hear. And the heart that may comprehend. What the word of the Most High says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. So the question is, whose report will you believe? As Isaiah asked, whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Messiah? Will you be believe the report of the Most High himself? Or will you believe the report of Apostle Paul? And like I said before, I don't believe that these are the works of the Apostle Paul. They must have been tampered with. Because Peter and John cannot preach something different. And then Apostle Paul is preaching something different altogether. And by the way, Christianity is based on the teachings of Paul. Ha! Ah. Yeah. Most of the scriptures that I read is from the uh, writings of Paul. No wonder, no wonder we still eat and clean food with thanksgiving. No wonder we don't see the need of circumcision. No wonder we don't see the need of keeping laws and statutes of the Most High. Whereas that is the path of salvation. The path of salvation is not just confessing. It is keeping the law as per the words of the Messiah himself. So whose report will you believe? Like we have seen in Hebrews 7, 18. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment, my goodness, going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. In other words, he's saying the commandment is, the commandments are weak. There's weakness in the commandments. They are unprofitable. Hey. These are the same words. That the Mosai in Deuteronomy 28 says, You shall observe to do according to all that is written therein, so that these blessings may come upon you and overtake you. You see, there is blessing, there is life in the commandments. And here, Apostle Paul says, The commandments are weak, they are not profitable, they are done away with, they have been cancelled, they have been put away, abolished. My God. The most I told Joshua, this word of the law should not depart from your mouth, but shall meditate upon it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written, according to all that is written. That you may prosper and have good success wherever you go. So it is profitable. It is not unprofitable at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is not the word of the most High. This word right here is not breathed by the Mosta. It's not from the mouth of the Mosta. Hey, it's getting hot. Hey, right here. Hey, Hebrews 8, 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. So in other words, Paul is inferring or suggesting that the first covenant 
was 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 full of faults. <laughs> what the most I establish is full of faults. And by the way, when it comes to the law, it didn't start with Moses. Look at the scriptures. Abraham kept the law. If you didn't know, you just think he believed by faith, <laughs> and it was according to according unto him as righteousness. No, he observed the law. He taught Isaac the law. Isaac taught Jacob. Jacob taught the twelve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to take it further, Noah observed the law, kept the law. That's why he was saved. That's why he did die. While others were perishing with the flood. People like Methuselah, Seth. They kept the law. The law didn't start now. It didn't start with Moses. So it was actually a restoration of the same. And that is what Messiah, the Messiah came to restore the law. To put it back in place. Hallelujah. To have it established. To have it enforced. But here, Apostle Paul is saying, it's, it's, it's full of faults. Huh? What, the, what the Most High established with Abraham is faulty. Hey. Hey. Ha. Forgive us, Father, for believing in lies. And we are grateful that you're sharing, you're sharing truth. Hallelujah from your word ah, hallelujah it's actually an abomination this right here is an abomination and blasphemy so if you still even up to this point still believe that all scripture is god breathed then in essence you're wrong you're in error actually hallelujah hallelujah psalm 119 Verse 142. This is David, the psalmist, speaking of the men of the Most High, the Tanzambi. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Your law is truth. Your law is truth. But Paul has just said that this law. It's weak. It's not profitable. It's faulty. <sighs> ah, the law of the Most High is truth. And when he says, you shall know the truth, you shall know the truth, the, the, you shall know the truth, you shall know the law, and the law shall make you free. Bantus, wherever you're listening to me, the law will make you free. The law Hallelujah. The law is the way. The truth. The law is the truth. Hallelujah. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 8. The law of the Most High is perfect. Paul have just said it is weak and unprofitable. Hmm? Faulty. The law of the Most High is perfect. Because the Most High is perfect. Whatever comes from His mouth is perfect. He does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He's not a man that He should lie. All His ways are perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Most High is sure. Making wise the simple. See, there's profit. There are benefits in keeping the law. There are profits. It's profitable in essence. Verse 8, the statutes of the Most High are right. They are not wrong. They are right. Hallelujah. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Most High is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The commandment is pure. The word of the Most High is pure. Ha. So don't put the law aside. The law is here to stay. And by the way, even in the next life, we'll still keep the law. Do you know they keep, they observe the Sabbath in heaven. They observe the feasts in heaven. <laughs> ah, read, read the book of Jubilees. You'll see these things. Huh. 
Psalm 119. Verse 115. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not your statutes. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they, for they, <laughs> for they seek not your statutes of the law. So for those of you who are not seeking the law, salvation is far from you. In essence, sometimes let's just speak plainly the way it is. Let's not sugarcoat. Hallelujah. Let's not sugarcoat. Let's say the way it is. Then it's a decision. You have a free will to choose. Hallelujah. You have a free will to choose. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Now, do you see <laughs> how Christianity is based <laughs> or, or the foundations of, of Christianity are not right foundations based on deception, based on another doctrine. We are taught something different. What the Messiah did teach, what the prophets of old did teach, what Abraham did teach. And Noah didn't teach these things. The preacher of righteousness, he didn't teach these things. They emphasized on the law. But one man, by the name of Apostle Paul, have come on board and changed the whole narrative. One man has changed the whole narrative. So, Choose ye therefore whom you will serve. Whom you will serve. Choose ye therefore whose report you will believe. You want to believe in the report of the Most High? Fine and good. The report of Paul? Fine and good. It's your own decision. Case closed. Hallelujah. So when all is said and done, Hallelujah. What do we do? Our mandate as the people of the Most High has burned to is to fear the master and to keep his commandments to fear the master and to keep his commandments this is our duty and we'll do it gladly we'll do it gladly hallelujah we'll do it gladly the commandments of the most are not burdensome ah. hallelujah there is life in them Hallelujah. There is healing. There is the blessing. There is provision, success and prosperity in the law of the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when all is said and done, our duty as the Bantus is to fear the Most High and to keep His commandments. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hope you're blessed. May the Most High help us all. The scripture says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. May the Most High help us all. I don't profess to know everything, but I'm endeavoring to learn from the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm endeavoring to learn. Hallelujah. So, Baraka. Salama to all of you. Thank you so much. All praises to the Most High. Tatanzambe Amazulu. Kembo, Kembo. Glory, glory to the Most High. Tatanzambe Amazulu. <laughs>